Hey, what's up, family? It's your man, Daryl II. I hope you're doing well. I want to drop a word, but before I do, let's bring God into this. Heavenly Father, I want to say thank you for a chance to bring your word to the people, and I want to say thank you for the privilege of hearing your voice, something we all can share in by having a relationship with you. You said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger's voice they will not follow. You know, I heard a woman of God mention earlier how important it is to continue spending time in the presence of the Lord so that we continue to familiarize ourselves with your voice. And I couldn't agree more. So, God, as I speak this word, I pray that people would discern your, your voice through the message that I speak and recognize your spirit involved. Holy Spirit, I surrender and I say, have your way and speak through me as you see fit in the name of Jesus. And anything in me not of you, I ask you to remove and clean right now. In Jesus name. Amen. I just wanted to say, don't allow anxiety or fear to cause you to make a hasty decision. Sometimes we can be under the gun, under pressure, and we can allow fear to cause us to become impulsive. And what can happen is we can step outside of the realm of peace that the Lord provides for us, and we can walk in a mindset of trying to control everything. And if you really trust God and you stay in a position of peace, one thing I can say is if you trust God, you will walk in obedience. And when you walk in obedience, God does provide peace. Sometimes things may turn out differently than what we may uh, think or the way God's promises are presented. How he presents them may come about in a way we may not have considered. And so because, what am I trying to say? Let's say you're in a position of faith and things are taking longer than you expected. You can lose your patience. You can lose your trust. You can lose uh, focus. And what can happen is... You step outside of your position and try to make things happen speedily. And you actually can create more havoc in your life or more headache. And even though God is a God who can redeem and he can restore, sometimes you can open the door for some challenges because you lose sight of trusting him. You know, I think about Peter when he walked in the water, he was walking towards Jesus. He, he stepped out of his comfort zone, out of the boat and walked on the water. And as he walked towards Jesus, he was doing the impossible. Um, but when he started to look at the circumstances he found himself in, he began to sink. And it's because he took his eyes off the prize. He took his focus off his savior. He looked at the chaos of surrounding him and he forgot about his faith and he began to sink. You could even say his faith in Jesus was left and minimized and he put more faith in his circumstances. But coming into agreement with the, the trouble he was in and he began to sink. But thank God for his blessed Savior, Jesus. He walked over to him and he said, oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? He asked him that question because when he wasn't doubting, you saw him do the impossible. But when he decided to take his attention off of Jesus and start doubting, he began to sink in his circumstances. And that's what we do sometimes. We lose our hope sometimes because we're looking at the wrong thing. When the truth is we should really be looking at Jesus, not looking at our situation, but him. And that's why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. It says the just shall live by faith. And so if you are of the tribe, of the household of faith, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you are considered righteous. Another word for righteous, just. So you live by faith because if we didn't live by faith, then we would be trying to control our lives. And often when we try to control our lives, it conflicts with what God is trying to do. And so we have a choice to make. We can trust God or we can try to take matters into our own hands and do things that we can't do because ultimately those big things that God wants to do in our life, only he can do. There's a reason he says, cast your cares upon me for he cares for you. He understands how difficult we can make our lives. And he's saying, listen, the burden you're experiencing, the challenges that are coming your way, I am such a big God that I can carry that for you and you can have peace. Will you trust me? It's not about what everybody else around you thinks. It's about what you think. Tr Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him and he's going to direct your path. So acknowledging him is having that interaction and inviting him into the situation, praying to him. You have the opportunity to do that. So the next time you find yourself feeling anxious, feeling fearful, take time to pray. So I want to come at you from Genesis chapter 15, and I think this will bless you. Part of my list from where my retainer. Here we go. Sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision and said to him, do not be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you and your reward will be great. I'm sorry. You know what? No, no, no. This isn't. I'm sorry. Chapter 16. 
Now, Sarai, Abram's wife, had not been able to bear children for him, but she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, the Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abram agreed with Sarai's proposal. So Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. This happened 10 years after Abram had settled in the land of Canaan. So Abram had sexual relations with Hagar and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress, Sarai, with contempt. Then Sarai said to Abram, this is all your fault. I put my servant into your arms, but now that she's pregnant, she treats me with contempt. The Lord will show who's wrong, you or me. Abram replied, look, she is your servant, so deal with her as you see fit. Then Sarai treated Hagar so harshly that she finally ran away. The angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a spring of water in the wilderness along the road to Shur. The angel said to her, Hagar, Sarai's servant, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she replied. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her authority. And then, she, then he added, I will give you more descendants than you can count. And the angel also said, you are now pregnant and will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord has heard your cry of distress. This son of yours will be a wild man, as untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against everyone, and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. They, therefore, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord, who had spoken to her. She said, you are the God who sees me. She also said, said have I truly seen the one who sees me? So that well was named Bir Lahai Roi, which means well of the living one who sees me. It can still be found between Kadesh and Barad. Now, why did I read that? I went a little further than I intended, but I wanted to emphasize something. Um, well, hang on, let me finish. So Hagar gave Abram a son and Abram named him Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. Now, why did I bring that up? Well, you all may not know the backstory, but God had promised Abraham that he would have a child in his old age with his wife, Sarah. Sarah was aware of this, but in that weak moment, she succumbed to the idea that it was impossible to have a kid and they compromised. Instead of them coming together, trusting God, she suggested that Abram, excuse me, my retainer. Sorry, sorry, my retainer was tripping. Abram, she suggested that Abram um, go and sleep with the, the handmaiden, the, the mistress Hagar. Now, this compromised God's word because it was her using her own in, human intellect to try to understand the promise God gave. And instead of fully trusting God, she tried to make things happen in her own way. And as a result, it, it opened the door for contention in the household. Now that one instance was not the only instance that took place in that house, but of conflict. And so what we can learn from that is we have an opportunity to take God at his word and trust him instead of allowing anxiousness and fear to push us to make a hasty choice. Abraham knew beforehand that God had promised them. So did she. And in that weak moment, what he should have done was say, no, let's go consult the Lord as a way to reaffirm what God had said, to reaffirm the covenant, to be energized and energize their faith and trust God. But instead of doing that, he listened to his wife. The Bible says, don't grow weary in your well-doing for in due season, you will reap a harvest if you faint not. It almost seemed like they were getting weary and waiting on God and they were focused on the wrong thing. And as a result, they created a child that was outside of the promise that God had intended. Now this child was still blessed because he came from Abraham. This child is an innocent life. Nevertheless, that was not God's intention. God's intention still was, you will have a promised child and it will be, he will be called Isaac. And they did. And so they opened the door for conflict because of their hastiness, their weak moment, and not going to consult the Lord. When you are pressured, stressed, fearful, anxious, perplexed, burdened, overwhelmed, instead of making a hasty choice, take a moment and go to God. Go to God at the throne of grace and ask him for his input on the decision. He will respond. Go to him and cry out to him, lament, give him your whole heart. He will respond. He said, when you seek me, you will find me if you search with all your heart. For I know the plans I have for you, plans of welfare, hope, and a future plans of peace. Don't allow yourself to, be, to, be, uh, to succumb to the temptation of duress, distress, and fear 
Because if you give in to that stuff, you're going to miss out on an amazing, remarkable miracle that God may want to do in your life because you're trying to take matters into your own hands. You have a choice. Are you going to trust God or trust yourself? You trust yourself, you're going to try and do something that God's meant to do. You're going to burn yourself out. The word of God says in Isaiah, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And so you must wait on God and his timing. And in the time that you're spending waiting, what do you think upon? Well, Philippians chapter four says, what's, uh, what's over is true. Whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is worthy of praise, we are to think on these things. Matter of fact, I'm just going to turn to it right now. Let me find it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go. Here we go. <clears throat> Here we go. So there's a couple of things I'm reading. Philippians chapter 4. 4 verse 6 says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. You got the secret right there. And I'm going to go a little further. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and, lo and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Paul is giving you the formula right here. When your mind is fixed on the things of the Lord, you are going to be in a state of peace. In fact, the book of Isaiah says, he who keeps his mind on me, him shall, he shall keep be kept in perfect peace. You want to stop trying to figure everything out with this. This is a limited thing. It's finite. The Bible says, as the heavens are to the earth, that's proximity. So are his thoughts to our thoughts. God sees and knows everything. And so we cannot do his job. And when we come to him and we bring our problems to the throne and throw them to him, he relieves us of the stress of trying to figure everything out. And he provides us peace. In fact, I read for you Philippians chapter four. Let me go find in the Gospels. There's something Jesus would say. He said a couple things. One thing he said was, pardon me. He said, come to me all who are heavy laden and who are burdened and who are weary and I will give you rest. That's an invitation. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's a blessing to have. And he also said, um, he said to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And he was basically talking about the things that people worry about. He said, that's what unbelievers will worry about. What will they eat tomorrow? What will this? He said, every day's trouble is sufficient for that day. You don't need to worry about tomorrow. Worrying will not cause one strand of hair to change colors. It will not add a cubit to your stature. It's a waste of time to worry. And so I just want to encourage you today that God has got you. And you don't need to allow fear to cause you to make an impulsive decision. I remember years ago, I was looking for a place to live, and um, I was uh, working as a correction officer. This was years ago in Texas, and we were all in the academy together, me and my coworkers. And um, one coworker was looking for a roommate, and something in my spirit, I knew it was God, was telling me, do not be roommates with this person. And I was basically hesitant, not giving an answer. I was basically, actually, I was telling him, like, nah, brother, I'm going to find my own spot. And what ended up happening was I kind of waited to the last minute to find a spot, and I allowed fear and anxiety to kick in because normally God would just show me and I get a spot like that. This was a little different. I don't know if I put forth enough effort or something, but something happened and I had a lot of fear rise up in me. And so I compromised. God had made it clear, spoke to me, spoke to my spirit saying this person has X, Y and Z. And so because of me allowing myself to be pressured and fearful of not having a place of security to live, I compromised and was roommates with the cat for a few months and it was warfare galore. Now, thankfully, God got me out of there, but it was an expensive lesson. And so it taught me that, for one, planning is good, but two, um, not allowing your emotions or moments of fear to influence you to make decisions that contradict what God may have already shared with you. Oh, the time is almost over. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. If you don't know Jesus, it's critical that you come to know him because when you die, you're going to go to heaven or hell. If you want to know Jesus, just say, Lord Jesus, please come in my life and be my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross and were resurrected from the dead. 
and you will have moments of, of uh, being persecuted, but it's worth the walk. I encourage you to get in a Bible-based church. Watch God transform your life. The minutes went by fast, y'all. YouTube, I'm still here with you, but for Instagram, that went by quick. Um, but again, I think I've proven my point. I just want you all to know that even in moments of fear, worry, and perplexity, go to the Father in prayer. When Jesus was burdened with the, the responsibility of having go, to go to the cross and die for all of mankind, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane first. <clears throat> and he prayed. And it said he prayed and he was so stressed that he prayed and it was he sweat drops of blood. That's a medical condition. That's how stressed he was. But he sat there and he spent time in the presence of his father. And he said, Abba, if at all possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will be done. Your will be done. He made a commitment to honor God's desires in that moment. But when he was feeling a sense of dread or burden in his flesh, I really believe his time in that moment with God was a time to strengthen himself to go forward and fulfill the calling on his life. And I just want to encourage you when you have moments of toughness, the father is always there. The son, our high priest, Jesus, he's always there. And the spirit of God is always there with you. So I encourage you today to recognize this and not let anybody per, uh, push you into a moment of making a hasty decision. But instead, if you feel stressed to do something, take time away and go spend time in prayer and listen to the voice of the Father for yourself. My name is Daryl II. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. It is a pleasure to come before the people. I love doing this and it is an honor and it's all glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Before I go, if you want some great reading, my mother, she's a pastor. She wrote a great book called New Believers, A New Life in Christ Jesus. It is a great book, um, really well-informed, well-written, um, where she just breaks down things like what is the Bible, the best decision you made, prayer, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Road to Maturity and New Life Beginning, a wonderful, wonderful book. Um, and so <clears throat> I recommend you get you a copy. I've read it and it's a blessing. And then um, her name is Marvell Alder. And then... I also have written a book recently on Facebook. Ah, you see, I'm getting tripping. Uh, on Amazon, it is called Random Thoughts of a Believer, Life Lessons for the Believer. If you get a chance, to check it out and tell me what you think. I think it'll be a blessing. Um, for those of you who gave your life to the Lord, it's important that you did that because when you die, eternity exists in heaven or hell. And if you don't know Jesus, you're not going to go to heaven. And that's not his wish. The Bible says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. He wants you to be in relationship with him. He wants you to go to heaven. He wants to have a personal walk with you. Um, it's not so much about religion. It's more about relationship, walking with the Father. But yet yeah, being in a Bible-based church is important too. Because doing that, you will be uh, you will be growing in your walk. And then you got to be baptized in water because you got to be born again of water and spirit. So I want to share all that because when you give your life to the Lord, your name is written in the book of life. Because it's, it's not your righteousness that gets you into heaven. It's his, placing your faith in him. And so Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that he died and God the Father raised him back from the dead, you'll be saved from your sins. And so that's what I was alluding to earlier, um, very expeditiously. So right now, if you want to do it, um, like I said, as a believer, it's a beautiful thing. You will have moments of persecution and being disliked because you belong to him, but it's a blessed experience. Uh, so if you want to do that, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe God the Father raised you back from the dead. Oh, sorry. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. If you did that, you're born again. I recommend you get in a Bible-based church. Watch God help you grow and transform your life. It's an honor. God bless you. Peace.